while the sword is there, they give it like two impacts. Makes impact one, two. There's something about just completing that circle that's just really satisfying. I felt it in my body. And that's the power of good animation. Hello again. A massive amount of you have been begging me to react to Demon Slayer episode 19. I mean, I was bombarded in that comment section. So I have done it and I'm aware that I'm, I'm not a part of the fandom. I don't watch a lot of anime anymore and I, I'd never watched an episode of Demon Slayer. That's the point of view that I'm coming from. So uh, I really hope that I don't regret making this video. I'm not trying to make an anime review channel. I don't want to be like the millions of anime review channels out there and the only reason I chose to actually make this analysis is because I think I can offer something that you can't find on other channels which is a technical analysis of the animation uh, and the storytelling from the point of view of a professional animator not an anime fan. That's what I'm trying to provide here. Overall, quick things I can say about the scene. Um, it is a very, very nice scene. The emotions really come through on it, even though I hadn't been, I hadn't watched any of the series. I watched that scene and it felt really good. Props to them, that, that is, um, shows it's, it's a well-made piece of animation. But at the same time, uh, I don't believe just from watching that scene that it's anything revolutionary, it's nothing game-changing. It's a shonen anime and it adheres to almost everything I can think of that is of the shonen anime genre. Um, I just feel like everyone's getting a little bit carried away with it. Let's not lose our heads here. I mean, as animators, let's not like, let's not go crazy. It's, it, there's a lot of hype around it right now. Um, and I, I do realize that, like, with this video, I am contributing to that. So, that's, uh, sorry. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you learn something from it. Alright, so, um, I've loaded up a few scenes here. I'm gonna go through them. So, a few overall things. The whole scene is just gorgeous. Um, the lighting is fantastic. And the real star of the show here, I think we can all agree, is the effects animation. Especially in how it's been designed and the lighting um, that it gives off. Yeah, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. And the character designs. I really like how the characters are designed. Highly detailed, um, really appealing designs. Okay, so this is the first scene I've loaded up. Um, I really like these uh, like red spider webs. They make the composition interesting. They kind of divide the frame up into these little sections. It looks nice. It's dynamic and um, creates depth because we've got uh, this one which is in the foreground. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, the background, there's loads of just black. This is just completely dark in the background with just the faint outline of trees. Um, and that really draws attention to any light source and the effects animation appears to be the only light source in the frame as well as the yeah and the and the web all the light that's um, on the characters is being bounced from the effects animation at us and um, so everything has that nice ambient glow and they've achieved that really well they've just done it very very well it makes the job of like seeing where the characters are in the frame very easy if we could see all these trees it might be harder to to see him and you know a lot of what makes for good composition is clarity so they've kind of set themselves up here to have a great scene with with a lot of clarity um, and a lot of um, attention drawn to the right areas this scene is kind of crazy because um, it goes on for nine seconds for nine seconds at 24 frames per second on once and so if you do the maths, that's approximately 216 individual drawings. That is, if they are drawings, it seems to me like they've auto in between. There's nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, anything goes in animation. It's all about the results. 
So um, the technology is there to auto in between, and I think that's what they've done here. Now, uh, I'll play through a bit of this for you so we can see it. So this is super smooth slow motion. I really like the depth that you get with this leg here. It really does feel like it's going into the scene. Everything in 2D animation is an illusion. So when you portray three-dimensional depth like that, it, it's, it's, a, it's an illusion. And so it's really a testament to the keyframe animator that he's drawn it in, in such a precise and, and very grounded way moving in 3D space. Um, the other thing I like that they've got right, which a lot of uh, a lot of the time animators make mistakes on this, but when his foot touches the ground, it, the foot stops moving as soon as it makes contact. So pay attention to the foot here. This is not really anything special, but it's just, it's solid. It's really good work. You see how it just, there's a decided frame where it stops. Mistake could be made where it doesn't stop fully and that's where you get this kind of floaty animation. Well, they've made sure to not do that. It's just solid work. But okay, let's talk about the fire here where you can see that it actually moves from one keyframe to another and that the most likely thing is that it's auto in between. Now for auto in betweening, I'm presuming they've used a software like Kikani. The software I've currently got open is bitmap software. Every tiny little pixel is like a tile that's got a certain color value and the whole canvas is portrayed like that. So in a software like Kikani, it's vector software, which means that with vector, it's more like there's a point here, it's like a coordinate. There's, and it's all a grid of coordinate um, and it moves from one point to another. An advantage that can be with vectors is that you can bring the computer in to make certain calculations. I'm, I'm guessing they do some kind of assisted morphing. Let's have a look at this flame here. If you look at it closely, the coordinates of the flame properties, certain corners and things, they move pretty much in a linear fashion to one keyframe. So they go there and then they slightly change course as the next keyframe goes on. The whole thing here is a keyframe. Um, and then it suddenly, instead of going in that trajectory, it goes slightly off in that trajectory. It's subtle, but this is how you can deconstruct it and work out that uh, the way they're doing it. These are linear in between, so they just move from one point to another. There's probably about five or six keyframes here, and it just moves very slowly between them. But yeah, they've done it very well. Um, it's very seamless, because normally there's like little problems that the software has when it's doing their or the auto in-betweens, and then you've got to go in and like fix it with um, frame by frame. So 216 uh, individual frames, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. The design of the effects animation is incredible. It's got a beautiful design, it's consistent throughout the whole thing and particularly what, what is great about the design is the shapes. They're a lovely midpoint between something which is natural and something which is stylized in a creative and uh, a, an eye-catching, appealing way. The thing that really makes them pop is that they have um, these harsh, thick, black outlines with uneven distribution. And that's, again, something you don't see a lot in anime. Why is that? Well, you're gonna see a theme here. It's because it's hard to do. It's very hard to keep uneven thickness of these black lines. That's very appealing, but it's also very difficult to maintain. So yeah, the shape design, the contrast that's made by the black outlines and the glow of the effects animation, the complexity of them, and the fact that it's silky smooth going at 24 frames per second. The color choice as well is very, very pleasant. Top notch, top quality. Little things as well that they do that I like. Um, I just noticed that the iris is made up of straight lines and it, it looks good. 
nice gradient here. Some of these keyframes are very well drawn, especially with the effects animation does kind of carry the, the whole scene. It's the star of the show here. This flaming sword is just fantastic. I love these smaller shapes that they've made in here. They look natural, but also like a graphic kind of style to them. This frame right here is really, I mean, I, I, what do I have to say about it? it it's, it's obvious that it's a fantastic um, keyframe. I, I think the keyframes are just so strong here, um, like that as a storyboard. So, you know, someone had to draw that first and then they kind of animated around it. We're seeing the sword through these flames and the flames are kind of um, engulfed and they're very gestural. They have loads of energy to them. The curves uh, wrap their way around in a very, a very intricate and a very appealing fashion. The red, the yellow, it's glowing so much. It feels like they're exploding off of the screen. Um, and then, but then we've got like this uh, black outline as well, which is really close to to the glows. So we got like intense glow right next to these black outlines, and um, that's an interesting contrast. And it puts the contrast right there, like really close to each other. This effects animation pops. It's like it doesn't, it, it can't be contained in the screen. Uh, oh yeah, I also like that the sword is coming right out at us. I always like things which kind of interact with the camera in a way that um, shows depth. And when the camera gets right up close to the action and it's right there in, in there, it just gives loads of depth and makes it very engaging for the audience. This shot is great. Um, in terms of animation, it's nothing special really, apart from, again, the effects animation is impeccable but um, the poses just kind of remain static and this is something you see a lot in anime. They just, it's overused in anime, I've got to say. But these uh, webs create this really nice kind of vortex swirl. Um, I guess kind of like a twisting tangle where they've um, uh, done this and it, and it just looks lovely. The pose is all right here. Uh, it's not fantastic, but the effects animation carries the whole scene and very well designed. You know, they've, you've got loads of like smaller minor shapes in here, sharp minor shapes. So this is really interesting because this, there's like two or three different effects animations going on and they're all in the in the in the warm spectrum in the red spectrum this is like a sort of pinkish red then he kind of bursts through this pinkish red blaze and he brings this sort of um, orangey yellow color and then he he's also kind of emitting these webs which are like a pinkish uh, red or but a different one they're all on the on around here and they're like hugging this area of the spectrum there's like one here one here and one around here and that's actually like a, a well-known color technique to just occupy one part of the color spectrum and then to maybe if you want have an opposing color on the other side but you don't need to it's really important where you just where you choose your color hues to be in the scene and it will give it a certain look I love slowing down scenes like this and actually, cause, cause when it plays through, it looks a certain way and then you're like, how did they do that? You can watch it through frame by frame and see exactly how they did it. We have a quick zoom in here. This was like a slower shot to just show what's happening. And then we quickly uh, zoom into to this area. Yeah, from the middle, we see him just bursting out and the color seems to change here. This uh, orangey glow starts to come in yeah, nice little motion blurs on here. That's really cool that you see the eye come through first. I'm sure they've done loads of post-production on this scene. Yeah, the multi-layered effects animation. I mean, they've worked really hard on this, you can tell. See, you can kind of tell here, this is a certain layer of effects animation. There's the original kind of sheet that he's bursting through, that's another layer. And then he's dragging along this flaming sword and that's another layer of effects animation. So it's like three layers of effects animation. They certainly have different colors, but they also behave slightly differently, which is really cool. Even if 
it's just one hit. They like to have like, doom doom, yeah, like double. I don't know, it's kind of a style thing. It works, it kind of doubles the impact, I suppose. So this is what I mean by like the layered effects animation and they behave slightly differently. So this has a certain style. You can see that this, this layer has like, this style. We've got these really cool little pieces here, which are nice, I like them. But then we've also got, you can see they've gone through another layer. They're like these particles, but they're slightly different. And they've got this um, thick black outline, which helps them stand out. And every time they layer it, they have this black outline. So the detail is like very clear. It's really intense. And they kind of remind me of like a fireworks display, which is why I kind of described it earlier as like them celebrating the triumph over this character um, and it really feels like fireworks and fireworks are a thing you use to celebrate so I think that's and that's kind of how it made me feel as well. This isn't of course this isn't specific to this anime but a thing that they do with a lot of animes which you might want to consider doing is like the moment of impact they hold on it like how long does it actually take to sever someone's head no time at all it's done in a second but they kind of they capitalize on the moment. So this moment of uh, uh, this pose, they've just decided like, that is the moment. It's the defining moment of the episode. So let's hold on it. So they hold on it a lot. They put a lot of camera shake on. So like while the sword is there, they give it like two impacts. Makes impact one, two. You see, one, one, and then they've got a, some cool uh, impact frames here. This must be like describing the line of the, the, the sword is taking, or maybe it's just a flare. Um, I wouldn't personally have done that. It's interesting that they did, and, it, and it's worked, obviously. They actually take away layers of effects animation for a moment. The character's just isolated, and then they bring it into red and black. I mean, why not? <laughs> it's only gonna show up for a moment, and then, there'll be the second impact, same pose. They're camera shaking like crazy here. At first, the effects animation is coming coming out of this side. There's a kind of impact you have where it comes back at you. And then there's an impact when it starts to come through on the other side. This side is still going, but then this side is kind of burst out. So I suppose it's like shows it's breaking through. And they got these nice little waves. Look at that soft composited into so yeah they really capitalize on the moment with like multiple different shots describing it what you just saw but in a different angle where he's um, bursting through that just looks so good let's see what they do here for impact frame yeah so this one they've done done a more simple just white flash um, just an, another kind of isolated glow, but like a different take on it, I suppose. Um, yeah, okay, this is cool as well. You know, the energy that's just coming off everywhere. There's method to the madness. It's not just scribbling everywhere. There's, there's areas of this where it isn't doing it. Next shot. Okay, so this one's probably the most interesting shot, I'd say, uh, out of all of them. Yeah, let me, let me just show it. Yeah, so it looks glorious. Uh, there are these little specks. They've made them glow um, to the point where they kind of start to expand their glow. And they've got like loads of little flares coming off, these little cross flares. Very popular to have these cross flares. Yeah, the sword is still at the base of the neck. It still hasn't gone through. They kind of overtake this until the blade is glowing. That's really cool. And then they do another one of these cool impact frames where they've decided to make it red. And then, oh, look at that. I really like how that looks, actually. It's really intense. It's impact frame. It's a directional lines done in a pencil-like way. And then it brings it back and it starts to finally move in. That's cool, interesting streak there. Uh, a lot of these things, like, it doesn't really matter how you do them as long as you do them at the right time. Like, with an impact frame, as long as the impact frame happens at the right time, you can kind of do whatever you want during the impact frame. I think there's even a joke, like, it, 
inside joke with certain animators who do impact frames like they'll put something silly or obscure in their impact frame and it just because it flashes by it's just more subliminal than anything yeah anyway this is my probably my favorite shot just because it's an interesting shot so we follow the blade as it's cutting through this guy's neck um and you see like flesh i can only assume it's flesh or maybe it's just raw energy but i reckon i i think it's and it's parting the flesh now the reason i like this one it's interesting but number two you feel it and i think this is an essential thing of what the purpose of animation is animation doesn't need to be just a, a delivery of the information that the audience needs it can be a way for you to feel something happen in your body. When I watched this shot for the first time, I really felt like I was the sword. I felt the sword cutting through, and it's such a visceral, immersive way to feel a sword cutting through. Um, and that's the power of good animation. Creative storyboard like this, and creative way of animating it, um, it can really feel very intense. So let's just play that at full speed. Yeah. And then it cuts straight into this really nice arc, this arc in this character animation. And then it explodes outwards. Ah, these arcs are so nice. Like this, the effects animation is, watch how these flames uh, leap out of this arc. And that, that happened very fast, so you can barely see it really. This orangey yellow glow comes first, and then like kind of from the rims of it, you get this really deep, intense red, probably from blood. They drag their way behind. They're making fantastic looking shapes. Look at this. The outlines, again, they're, they're keeping with that, that look, that design they've gone for. Bigger, so you get a piece of negative space there that's growing in size, finding its way down. The contrast, you know, we've still got like absolute black in different points and then we've got this which I can only assume is very close or it is absolute white and this in the same frame that's high contrast and now we're replaying it again so there's like it's still going I love these little single particles that are like the remnants from the previous clip of animation swirling around him They have played with the timing here fantastically. The, the animator really knows what he's doing with timing. So slow and then it goes really fast. Um, all the um, impact frames, this is like the money shot, this one. So let's look at the timing one more time. So slow and then it's like ramps the speed up for that, that rip across and creating that circle. Um, by the way, really nice depth here in the circle. The fact that the thickness of this side is less than the thickness of this side and this. It feels like there's real 3D depth there. Uh, I, I really like the fact that it completes that circle. There's something about just completing that circle that's just really satisfying. You see, my tendency, my tendency would to be to do the realistic thing, which would be to maybe, I'd say, okay, he's overextended his arm by the time he's got to there, so he's only gonna get around to like there. So I'd probably do it like, as a bad habit, I'd probably do it like round to there, which is just an odd kind of almost complete circle, just because it's the realistic thing to do. Mm, that's not as satisfying. So they've uh, just gone ahead and like completed this perfect circle, super satisfying to see that circle of light, uh, like this kind of halo with, of course, all the effects animation bursting out. For impact frames, this one's pretty crazy. Look at that black, thick black outline, white. I think any of you could draw an impact frame like this. It's, uh, it's not like technically difficult. It's more about where you place it, like where in the timeline, when, when you place it. Interesting color shifts. I mean, everything's popping here, like the colors, the contrast is just popping out. This is impact frame one, and then they got two, three, that's like 3.5, it's pretty much the same. 
four, five, and then, yeah, so like five impact frames. So they really go to town on the impact frames, and I see a lot of animes do this, and it works. It, it adds a big old punch to it. If there's anything near the camera, you just have it like swipe in front of the camera when you need it and it just it looks good and it's a good way to transition as well not that this transitions but um, well it kind of it's kind of like a nice wipe through uh, these keyframes are really nice so if we just pay attention to like something like this they, they're doing it properly like they're doing it really thoroughly it's not just like oh we'll just draw a bunch of keyframe they relate to each other it's actually flowing you know we've got this negative space pushing up um, and then around like this so it's like following this kind of convection which it would um, you got this part pushing up this would all actually happen yeah and then they've just like flooded it with layer upon layer of effects animation this uh, floor is now like really light um, it's like bursting out um, away from the spectrum our eyes when we perceive like something that's extremely bright um, We can't calculate the color. So we just move it into white. We just class it as white So does a camera a conventional camera when when you capture something that's very bright It loses all of its color value. So they've done that here the core of this is just absolute white But then the fall off is really nice. So you've got white um, beams of effects animation, but the fallout it falls off into this really saturated red, uh, red, orange, yellow color spectrum, which is lovely. It's just very pleasing to the eye. Here's a different layer of effects. These are different layer of effects. Uh, we've got the main thing, and then we've got all the nice crispy flames, which just look gorgeous. Like, if it were me, I would have probably ended the whole thing on this shot. Make sure I'd created that lasting impression. But they had like two other shots afterwards. Oh yeah, there's like the head flying off. Uh, it looks great. Talked about it so much. All right. Uh, I've just got a few th more things to say while I have your attention. So uh, one of them is that I've now got a new merch line. So I've redesigned the hoodies to have the new logo and I've also brought out um, iPhone and Android phone cases, which is just something cool. I'm waiting for mine to be delivered. I'm also going to be designing Animator Guild caps. So the link to the store will be in the description. It's just a fun thing that I like to do. I just enjoy designing these things and you don't have to buy them, but if you do want to, I really appreciate everyone who buys one. The other thing is that we've got a second channel that you might not be aware of. It's called the Animator Guild Community and it's for young animators, aspiring animators who want to make a name for themselves and want to get practice uh, making animations. And you can do that. The link to the channel will be in the description. We showcase people's animations. There's the YouTube channel, which you sub should subscribe to. And there's also the Discord group, which you can join and chat with loads of animators from all over the place. The other thing is that I have a Patreon page. And if you want to help the production of these videos, you can uh, pledge a small amount every time a video comes out. It really helps the production of these videos. It helps me to keep on making them. Okay, I uh, think that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.